It's ready. All right. Yeah, I see it. Right, cool, cool. We're going to start it off, of course, by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. Peace and blessings to the brothers and sisters scattered abroad across the four corners of the earth, learning and or teaching his gospel and truth and sincerity. And as we're waiting for the arrival of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah, to come back and Lord willing, deliver us, we will be of that hopeful elect. Um, we know what time it is right now. Time. Yeah, no doubt, man. It's the time of the end, time in which the word of uh, the scripture should be fulfilled. So, you know, uh, what we're doing, you know, is basically talking about one of the more important key points is, uh, you know, the way to salvation. And uh, we're, you know, the whole thing, as far as the example is brought about first with Yahweh Shai, who is the firstborn among many brethren. Um, and so he showed the example in the way in which we were going to, you know, be able to enter into everlasting life. And it starts off, uh, with, you know, baptism, you know, in his name. Okay. Now what he did is he showed the example to show all righteousness, um, as he was baptized by John. Okay. And, um, he humbled himself to, for it to be so. So we're going to go through, you know, uh, Yahweh Shai's baptism and other examples of baptism through the scriptures. It's going to be a relatively short one, but this is just done to show, you know, brothers and sisters, you know, what we've been talking about. And hopefully, you know, uh, we'll have a follow up if time per it permits, uh, depending on what goes on in the coming days. We may be able to, you know, hopefully do this either later this week or next week um, and kind of you know, maybe have more of a question and answer session concerning this particular topic. So, so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and start off at Matthew chapter three and uh, start at verse one. So it says here in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. OK, so that's what we're talking about. Um, this particular time was, you know. Considered you know, a very pivotal time in history, which was the coming of the Messiah, which was prophesied to come. Uh, now we know that the end didn't come at exactly at that time, but his coming actually ushered in, letting it be known that the end, the, the, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because in this particular time, there was slated a number of people were, who were to believe on him back then. And those that rejected him then, you know, um, and, you know, did not take the mercy of our Lord uh, through, you know, having faith in Yahweh Shai, uh, they're rejected, you know, forever. Okay. And that's a whole nother topic. Now, as we go on, it says in verse three, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, which is Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So that's what we're doing. We're basically showing you that baptism is is the beginning of that straight path. OK, do you have anything to say about that? No, nah, man, that's that's a clear, clear as day, man. It, it can't get any clearer than that. I mean, yeah, that's the beginning and the pathway to uh, to salvation. You can't get in uh, any other way around. He says the, uh, the gate is straight. It's a straight way. You have to climb through that. So. <laughs> Baptism is, is one of the things you have to go through. That's what you got to go through and do. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to say it, the straight gate. That's why Yahweh Shai says, enter ye at the straight gate. Mm -hmm. Because the broad gate is what a lot of brothers and sisters are doing in Israel, which is basically saying baptism isn't needed. And the brother and guys are trying to find their own way to walk this walk. Yeah, they may have the name, but then they reject the straight path, which was set forth as an example. There, there's a reason why John the Baptist had to lead this way because he had to be there had to be somebody that was going to usher in the, to show the pathway. And Yahweh Shai was not going to do that himself. It was prophesied that there was going to be one crying in the wilderness that was going to make great the, the way of the Lord. OK, so as we go down, we'll just skip down to verse five. Uh, it says, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan 
confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, so meaning they really came to his baptism just to observe what he was doing. Because as you go on through the gospel accounts, you'll see that, the, that many of the Pharisees rejected uh, the council of baptism like we talked about last week. Oh. And it says, and he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth fruit, therefore fruit, meat for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God, or Yahweh, is able to of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You're right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you Salaki, he was about to, you was about to, <laughs> he was no, thinking the same thing. He was about to go ahead and tackle the same thing I was about to go ahead and do. I can already tell. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> it was that, them stones, man, that we, what you were just bringing up before, man, saying he can raise up these stones onto Abraham. That just shows you how <laughs> that, that statement right there just shows that John the Baptist made just shows you how insignificant it is to be an Israelite without going through the straight gate. Mm -hmm. Again, it shows how insignificant it is to be an Israelite if you're not going through the straight gate, which is through Yahweh Shai, because he's saying he could just raise up any anybody, he could bring up the next Israelite to go and follow Abraham, and then they'll do it the right way. That's what the Most High could do. None mm -hmm. of us are required. He could make another. He, he, it's, it's that Beyonce song. He can remake a replacement. In a minute, yep. in exactly, seconds. exactly. And, and the thing about it, who 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 was he talking to? The Pharisees and Sadducees, which Come the on. Pharisees and Sadducees of today would have a doctrine that you just need to be Israel. Come on, man. Okay, <laughs> that would be the doctrine. The doctrine is, say, look, we're Israelite. It don't matter if I do that. I'm gonna be in the kingdom anyway. Yeah, and, and this is the stumbling block that has been set before our people. And you got to think about this, you know, we're going to go through these examples fairly fast, but when you really think about it, ask yourselves this, if these men were being rebuked because they were not going to be baptized, which we already have scriptures from last week to show you that they rejected it, but think about the fact that they believed that they were justified according to the flesh because they were the seed of Abraham. And many people today will argue the point that they don't need to get this done. And it's, it is baffling at times, considering the fact that there's so much proof concerning it. And then on top of that, the guy that y'all say y'all believe in, Yahweh Shai, he did it. And he's <laughs> greater than all of us. Come on, man. In some way, you're above getting it done when he got it done. And this is where there's a big disconnect. And what it is, is that many of y'all that say y'all believe in Yahweh Shai actually don't believe on him because if you did believe in him, you would follow his works and example. And those of you that do believe in him and follow his works and example, it shows that you truly have faith in the counsel, in the operation of Yahweh, which he ordained, starting with John the Baptist, which is the baptism in water for the remission of sins. OK, because the remission of sins comes through the blood and water, his shedding of his blood and the faith, the act of baptism, which shows you have faith in him. OK, that is the first starting, like the brother said earlier, the straight gate, the entryway of the straight gate is through that baptism. OK, in Yahweh Shai's name for the remission of sins. Oh. Now, as we go on to verse 10, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, which is this is John the Baptist speaking because it's not in red letter. Um, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. OK, like as you've seen in the book of John or the gospel of john he said that he would send the comforter which the heavenly father will send in his name that's the holy ghost which you saw what happened in pentecost fire is referring to the tribulation the fiery trial which is to try you which is to purify you in your walk to make you acceptable unto the lord now as we go on whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. 
Then cometh Yahawashai from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Hmm. So here it is. John the Baptist was just rebuking the Pharisees and Sadducees concerning their mentality, their carnal mentality of about being the sons of Abraham, being of the seed line of Israel, and telling them that they need to repent in order to bring forth fruit worthy of repentance that they, they may be able to what? be chosen. Now here comes Yahweh Shai behind these guys that were set up beforehand. Okay, there's a parallel to what's going on today to show you the way to do it. So the Yahweh Shai showed the example to those after him the right way to start this thing off. Yahweh Shai could have just easily said, I don't need to do that. Just like a lot of people say, I'm not only am I of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but I'm the son of Yahweh. He could have just been like, I don't, he really would be more justified in saying that. But he does the will of the Heavenly Father. And that's what we're talking about with water baptism in the name of Yahweh Shah for the rich and the sins. It is the will of the Heavenly Father, okay, that one has to submit to. Now, as we go on, what did John say? Verse 14. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized in thee, and comest thou to me? So John felt like, I, I, I don't, I'm not worthy to do this for you. You should be doing this for me. Now, what did Yahweh Shai said? Yahweh Shai answering said unto him, Suffer it be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Mm. This is to fulfill all righteousness. If you want to fulfill righteousness, everybody says that the righteousness cometh by the law. Well, guess what? Baptism is law. It's a commandment. You can't get around it. Hey. Come on, man. Go ahead. We could, we could get we could get that out real quick since you got that. We could get that. Uh let's get Psalms. Um 119 and 172. Because we, we know to keep the commandments, right? Mm hmm Is it? Go ahead, read it. Yes, let me see. Uh, yep. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Mm -hmm. So, we know the commandments of righteousness, but we go back into Matthew 3 and 15 when Yahweh Shai was baptized. He said to John, suffer it now. So what, what did he say? It's to fulfill what? All righteousness. All righteousness. So, I mean, at the end of the day, if you, we agree that the commandments are, bat, uh, the commandments are righteousness, and Yahweh Shai is saying this act right here taken forth in the water is to fulfill all righteousness it means to fulfill a commandment that the most high gave. Mm -hmm. And it's, they intertwine, man. It, it's, it, it goes hand in hand, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, we, that's why I for real, like gotten to the point really where you just say, when you say, keep the commandments, we can agree with you, but when you say, keep the commandments, baptism needs to be in those commandments. when y'all talk about it. So if y'all saying that's nullified, then y'all saying that's a commandment. We don't have to take anymore. Mm hmm. Yeah, this is you're saying. I mean, you're basically saying that John the Baptist um, and Yahweh Shai, you could just remove chapter the Mark, Matthew chapter three. Just remove it out of the scriptures. It's not even needed. Right. If you if that's the case, God, why is this here? Why is I mean, you got to think about it. Matthew chapter three literally is talking strictly about baptism from start to finish. Mm hmm. If you don't believe that this needs to be done, then you literally don't ever need to go here. You have no reason to go here if you don't believe in baptism. You really don't. Oh. And we have to say this because, you know, we're at the end. You know, at the end of the day, for brothers and sisters to see this, like, you're not going to be able to use an excuse that some other man told you this wasn't needed. Well, guess who would have said the same thing? Those Pharisees and Sadducees that mm. John the Baptist was rebuking. So now, you think that they're going to be justified? He just rebuked them and told them 
that if they don't do the works meet for repentance, that they're going to be hewn down and cast into the fire. Yeah, that's a that's a straight cut to, to saying, you know, you're going to come back and get an easy Israelite pass. Uh, that's a that's another false doctrine, and we're not going to get into that today. But that just shows you there's another. That's <laughs> he really he really he's cutting up two doctrines that go against his principles in this one chapter. It's cutting it up. <laughs> that one chapter cuts those alone, <laughs> like telling you, and they and they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand when you get into this because if you don't do this baptism, guess what? <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna be making. You got to believe. You got to be baptized. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll definitely get into that. We'll definitely get into that because we'll get into some of those statements uh, concerning that exact thing before we go into, you know, uh, the examples, the other examples uh, that are here. Now, we see here that he suffered him at the end of verse 15 in Matthew, verse 16, and Yahweh shy when he was baptized. Now, people will say that ba being baptized means you had the word spoke, uh, preached to you and you believed. That's not what happened here. This is the true definition of baptize. Okay. When he was baptized, went up straight out of the water. So he came out of the water. This ain't talking about some metaphysical, spiritual water. This is talking about actual water because they were in the River Jordan. Okay. We're going to see a theme with being by water as well as we go through the examples. He came out of the water and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the spirit of Yahweh descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So the Amen. most high was pleased with Yahweh Shai getting baptized in water. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. I thought people wanted to have the most high be pleased with them. I thought this we were in this walk for. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, so, I mean, that's an example. <laughs> it's like an example. It's like if a, t if a professor... If anyone was going to college or even just in high school, whatever the case, you was trying to get a good grade in your paper. The professor gives you tips. Here's what you do to receive an A. Here's how you may get extra points. I, I don't know. When you look at that and say, hey, OK, well, this is what's going to make the professor want to get my grade. You know, maybe I should take these and take this advice. Maybe I should follow this step. Yep. It's the, it's, it's the same thing. I was shy. Led the blue, he's just leading the blueprint, man. He is the blueprint. He's the follow of, of how to be in the uh, the most highest good graces, man. To, to the you know best of what we can do, man. This why why my it's hard. The walk is already hard enough as it is. Why make it harder for yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think that it's uh, something that people have to really you know look into, and you know, for those of y'all that have already done it. This is just more encouraging that you're that you started the right way mm -hmm. and you're on the right path. And now you're just going through the process of sanctification, you know, trying to endure to the end, you know, basically getting your your wisdom and your knowledge and your mind uh, getting, you know, just, you know, all the 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 things that you would need, you know, just like it says in Ephesians about, you know, shielding yourself from the, the wiles of the devil, you know, having your you know, your shield, your breastplate, your, you know, shod with the, you know, the gospel of peace and, you know, all those things that you would need to withstand on the evil day. Right. So that's yeah. all you're doing now. You're just growing towards this path on this straight gate, you know, and when you're not in this straight gate you, and you are in a broad way, you, you are more likely to veer off to different paths and lanes. And this is the reason why we see that people don't have like the true focus at times when it comes to what they need to do. And for me and, you know, just and you and other brothers that we talk to, like one of the things that we always say is we want to make sure that we're right, that we're on the right direction. I don't want to have to feel like, should I could have, should I done this? Should I done that? That is the worst place in mind that you would want it, that you would be if all hell breaks loose and you're then questioning yourself about whether or not you did what you were supposed to do, you know, and I'd rather have the peace of mind um, knowing that I did the right steps that the Lord had prescribed and you can live with yourself mentally knowing that you did the right thing. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go on to uh, John chapter five. Let's see. 
actually John chapter three, but we'll start at verse uh we'll start at verse three actually. Now we did talk about Nicodemus, but this is uh just kind of reiterating the point. This is John chapter three and verse three. Yeah, how which I answered and said unto him. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. He cannot see it. Okay, meaning you ain't going to enter. Okay, you're not going to see it at all. All this you're going to get back as a baby. You have to be born again on the side before the kingdom. You're not born again on the side on the uh, uh, on the other side of the kingdom. Just mm -hmm. except a man be born again. It ain't talking about you being born again. Oh, you didn't make it. and You just a baby in the kingdom. No, you got to be born again on this side, and he's going to break it down. Then Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yahweh Shai answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Now, we were just in Matthew chapter 3, as you saw when he came out of the water, the, the spirit of the most high fell upon him. Okay. The Holy spirit, right. Which he didn't receive by measure. He got the fullness of it. Okay. And he, that is an example of how one would enter. You would have to have that particular experience first in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Now verse six, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So if you're born of the flesh and you have not gone through the process of being, you know, having your sins remitted and receiving the grace of our Lord and the awareness of the of the, the spirit. OK, according to the Ephesians chapter one, then what happens is you're led by the flesh. And what happens is you become self-willed and now you begin to have to create doctrines uh, that Satan begins to lead you through because of your ignorance that you have in your mind. And that's why you see people that are out there that are pushing you know, you not only they're preaching, you don't need to be baptized, but they're, you got people out there saying, you know, the mark of the beast is not the chip. There's going to be no digital currency. We need to build in Babylon. You got people that just started building up communities in Babylon like the last couple of months. Look what's, look what's happening. Why don't they know what's going on? Why are they not able to see that this is not the time for that? That the, what you need to be building is not physical homes. OK, you need to be building up the spiritual house in order to get yourself and your family to be delivered. But they're led by the flesh and not by the spirit. Okay. Now, yeah. so what were we going to say? No, I was just, just kind of agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, verse seven, marvel not that I say it unto thee, ye must be born again. What does born again mean? Does born again simply mean coming back to your nationality? How would that make any sense if Yahweh Shai is talking to Israelites that know they're Israelites? <laughs> they were keeping the Passover. If you were in Judah and Jerusalem, you were keeping the customs. Yeah. Just off the sheer fact you grew up in the customs. This is something you naturally did. You knew you were an Israelite. So how does that apply to those that are, how do you become born again if you're saying that that's what it means to be born again It's coming back to your nationality only? It, you know, see, see, man, and <laughs> that right there is why um that verse seven, you know, for them it, it it means so much more even for for our brothers, our brethren and sisters out here in this time that that can't see it, marvel not, you know what I mean? Because now mm -hmm. it's it's even that much more heavier because like you brought up the fact that hey look, people back then they knew that they was Israel, that wasn't an issue back then, they knew who they were, that 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 they knew exactly what their identity was. In this time frame, it's like, it's a psychological thing. It's like, we're so happy to understand that who we are as a people, we actually coming into the, the knowledge of who we are and our identity, which don't get me wrong, that's right. That's, that's, we always, we say that that's part of the gospel. That's part of it. But the thing is, it's not the full scope. That's not what's going to get you out. Because when you go back into these examples, you see that hey, everyone knew that there was not a, an identity crisis. It was not an identity problem at this point in time. Mm -hmm. it was, we prophesied that it would lose that. And, and now that we got it back, okay, now what do we do? That's why in the next, <laughs> that, the next example we're going to go into, actually, they ask, what do we do? They were mm -hmm. Israel. Everyone knew <laughs> they were Israel. I'm, I'm jumping ahead yeah. of the course, but that's just how it, 
<laughs> they knew what they they knew that they were Israel. So they asked, "What did they do?" These these people took steps. Mm. And I'm gonna stop right there before I jump too far ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. I mean, I've never worked. We've never we've never worded it this way concerning like going to verse seven, but I mean, it's true. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> The only thing that us knowing who we are did was for us to then be able to understand why we're in the condition we're in today. And like the brother said, ultimately, to find out what is it that we need to do to get right with the Lord. Like that's where your identity of knowing your Israel should lead you to. OK, damn, if we're the Lord's chosen people and we get jacked up like this, one, what did we do wrong? And two, how can we get into the good graces of the Lord? So that way he can take us out of this condition that we're in. Come on. That, that's the only reason why you're, that's the main reason why your identity, you be thinking your identity should lead you to those particular men, you know, mindset, mentally. Those are the questions you should be asking after that. That's the questions I ask. Once I think myself, I said, okay, damn, well, if that's the case, what do I need to do to get right with the Lord? Okay, I just need to know I'm Israel and, and keep, a few of these commandments okay oh, okay and then you found out later on that it wasn't enough that okay people were doing that back then so what what is it more oh i need to get my sins remitted now these things make sense okay mm -hmm. how did the most i set it up okay oh he oh okay this is how i did it you read the book of the gospels you read the book of acts you read the epistles now you're getting understanding of that okay so just like it says in verse eight, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one of the, that is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? Okay, and Yahusha answered and said unto him, art thou a master in Israel? No, it's not these things. And that's the reason why we implore a lot of you brothers that are calling yourself elders, camp leaders, you got to remember that you yourself are leading a group of men and women in the, into a path of salvation or a path of destruction. This is not something about you wanting to be uh, the best teacher in Israel, wanting to be getting praise to be seen of men and getting praise of men. If you are going to be a teacher, you want to know the will of the Lord and you want to be not only yourself on the right path, you want to be also leading others in the right path. That should be your mentality as a as a teacher, all right, among the people. If you're not that, you are nothing more than a false prophet, and you will receive the reward of a false prophet. Huh. So for some people, if you're not even in the position to understand what you're really in right now, if you're teaching and you're you're teaching ignorantly, you will be judged for your ignorance. You know, you will be judged for that because the truth was already made manifest right in these scriptures and these things were said before many witnesses okay so now we're gonna go with this we're gonna go ahead and swoop down and we're gonna start going through the example so i'm gonna just go down to john chapter 3 and verse 22 it said after these things came yahweh shai and his disciples into the land of judea and there he tarried with them and baptized now let's see what kind of bap because he if he said preaching it would have said he was preaching Okay, so they were baptizing, mainly really his disciples, which we'll show. Now it says, and John also was baptizing in Anon near Salem because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. Okay, now as we go on to chapter four, we're going to see the same thing. Okay, now it says here, John chapter four, verse one, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Yahweh made and baptized more disciples than John, though Yahweh himself baptized not, but his disciples. So his disciples were doing the baptizing. Okay. Because like John the Baptist said, I must decrease and you must increase. The baton was then being passed. That particular aspect of the ministry, the repentance of, you know, the remission of sins, was basically passed off to the disciples of Yahweh Shai. Okay, uh -huh. prove that with various examples as well. Okay, so Yahweh Shai himself was not baptizing people, he was letting his disciples do it. And we know probably, probably the reason why because we know how carnal people would get if Yahweh Shai was actually baptizing them in water. You know how Jake would be, 
it would create a whole different freaking faction of Israelites that would be we're the guys that was baptized by Yahweh Shai. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Paul yeah. did what happened in the Corinth Corinthians with uh, Paul. So you can imagine how much worse it would have been if Yahweh Shai was actually doing it. So he had his his disciples do it. Come <laughs> and yet, and yet, and that's and that's a key. That's a key point. That's so when people you know. Like, hey, did Yahweh Shai baptize? That, that there's re look deeper than just beyond the surface. Glad you brought that out. Uh, just look deeper and beyond the surface. But even there, it says that right in verse one, and in and in back in that twenty uh that twenty two, it was mm -hmm. saying he was baptizing. And what it meant by that was he was with. It's, it's no different than when brothers go out, right? It, it's not about the actual, you know, the person that dumps them in the water. That's that's part of the whole operation. If a brother talks mm -hmm. to another brother and they set up the baptism if, if three brothers go out and they are together and they're going to baptize a, a household guess what it's that whole body it's a whole operation they went and baptized so it's not about trying to hey you know what i'm saying like you said getting carnal and saying no it was my i did it because i'm the one you know what i'm saying like this is the mm -hmm. team the team scores a touchdown yeah you may look at the one person who scored but it's the whole operation those points go to the whole team no doubt no doubt uh -huh. Come on, man. That's beautiful. It's a way to look at it. So, yeah, now we're going to go to uh, the book of Acts. So we're just going to zoom through some of these examples. And this is for you brothers and sisters that want to know uh, some of the examples that are in here. You know, we're not going to go over every one of them. We're just going to go through some of the main ones. We might skip a couple of them, but nonetheless, uh, we'll see here. Uh -huh. Enough for the brothers and sisters to see examples. You know what I'm saying? You see examples of people when they did this. and mm -hmm. All of these examples are in water. Gone. So now let's go to, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and read it. Acts chapter 2, start at verse 36. All right. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that Yahweh have made that same Yahweh Shah whom ye have crucified both Lord and Hamashiach. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Hey, look. So again, and, and that was that's what I was referencing earlier was that, um, you know, these these people know they were Israelites. These, these were these were Jews here. And the ones turned in, they turned in Yahweh Shah. And you had some of them that were, were pricked. And it, it hit them they, like they felt this. <laughs> the others, not so much, you know, but there was some that felt this and they're asking, well, dang, we turned into Messiah. What shall we do? Now, this is this. This can't be talking about the word, because if we go all the way up, right, we always we always bring this up every time you, when you go all the way up. Peter was preaching the whole gospel, this whole pretty much this whole chapter. So he was giving them the word and that word pricked their heart. So now they're asking, what shall we do? So if that's the baptism of the word, you got you to gotta ask yourself, why are they asking that question? Mm. That's right. Verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the mm. promise is unto you. And to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our power shall call. Yeah, and with many other, oh, go, go ahead. I'm my fire. No, keep, no, keep going. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word, the ones that received this word they felt it the ones that were that were felt they felt this and they said this this hits this this touched their spirit received his word were baptized and the same day there were added on to him about three thousand souls so everybody the rest everybody else was a team effort man everybody was baptized and all the brothers were baptized and others continuously going on until you know everybody was baptized in the name of Yahweh Shah. yep yeah, and that's a very interesting aspect in verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Now, many people are saying that being that hearing the preaching of the gospel, hearing the word is what gets you baptized. But it says those that gladly received his word 
were baptized. Okay. Uh -huh. So meaning that they believed that what the brother read earlier, there was preaching and with them receiving the preaching. Okay. They were then baptized. Okay. That's why it said it, man. You know, that's why I said in verse 38, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Because see, the, the what shall we do confirmed that they heard it. They were like, they were cutting their heart, like the brother said. And they asked, what shall we do? And he said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Remember, the baptism is, the water baptism is what? The repentance for the remission of sins. It is the act that the Most High set up. Come on. To prove somebody's faith in Yahweh Shai. All right. So um, now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and go to the next example. That's in, um, in the Acts 8, I believe. Yeah, we're in Acts 8. So we're going to go to, let's see, we're going to go to uh, 26. So you can go ahead and, and begin reading it. Shoot. Hey, let's start, let's start off. Uh, start off at eleven real quick. Okay, come on, come on. Go to eleven. Yep, that's a good one. We can start there. Come on. And to him, they have regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with uh, sorceries. When they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of Yahweh and the name of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, they were baptized, both men and women. <laughs> it was funny how that, that flows right into it. They believe Philip preaching the things. So he was preaching. Mm. And the name of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, they were baptized, both men and women. So after the preaching, they were baptized. Same thing. Man, this is really just in a nutshell how it should be done. Uh, you preach the things concerning the kingdom to come. You know, what happened, you know, and basically the, the name of Yahweh Shai, and when they believe, you baptize them. Come on. <laughs> come on, man. That's the summary of what you do. God. The things concerning the kingdom mean the gospel, the good news. You have a kingdom coming if you believe in Yahweh Shai, who is going to be the deliverer, okay, who died for your sins, okay, shed his blood that you may be able to receive, you know, everlasting life. Come on now. And upon believing on that, get baptized. That's right. That's like you said, like you just said, that's a token. That's a show of your faith. That's proving your faith. Proving your faith. <laughs> faith without works is dead, right? It's proving your faith. And if a brother like says they believe in or, or sister they say you believe in your house shot but you don't do that that shows that you have a lack of faith mm -hmm. yep it, it gets even better verse 13 then simon himself believed also and when he was baptized he continued with philip and wondered beholding the miracles and signs which were done so he simon himself believed also and when he was baptized separate mm -hmm. action separate things yep yep so when he believed the next step was him getting baptized see they weren't just going out there preaching and just saying his name is the, the messiah's name is Yahweh Shai, and they just go about their way you know Come on, man. you know say stuff about esau you know say? <laughs> say that rome is babylon which they which rome was known as babylon even back then that which no. has been just shall be done. There's no new thing under the sun. So no. they, so that, that's just what, what, what it just was. It was deeper than that. Okay. And, and this is a sign and a token of somebody's belief. Come on. Mm -hmm. Look at that 26 that you, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip saying, Arise, and go toward the south onto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem Jerusalem onto Gaza, which is desert. Now look, this the thing I, I caught up on this on 26 is, is key. This is an angel of the Lord that spake unto Philip. This is a messenger of the Lord that spake unto Philip to go in this particular direction. Wait, because, uh, hold on. 
But brothers are saying that the baptism was done away with. Uh, yeah, you so know, an angel that's... directed Philip to go talk to somebody, right? <laughs> Come on, man. Okay, so we, go ahead, Ock. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got you to check, right? <laughs> so we'll read that again. An angel of the Lord spake on to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south onto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem onto Gaza, which is desert. All right. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. So this guy, if he came to Jerusalem to worship, he was an Israelite. The man of Ethiopia, meaning he was a man that was from the country of Ethiopia. Just like they say a man or a woman of Thyatira, of Colossi, or of Rome. And then later when you read, you'll see that they're a Jew. You know, just like um, Priscilla and Aquila. They were of Rome, but they were Jews. Okay, uh -huh. men lately come from Italy, as it says. So this is a man that was an Israelite who was in Ethiopia. Okay, which, at, which if you look it up, the Queen of Candace would have been in modern day Sudan. Okay, out there in in the in sudan where the town or city was known as maro just to kind of give you a geographical location because it says ethiopia but it wasn't literally the the country that is now known as ethiopia it was north of that region okay so he came to jerusalem to worship okay so that means he was an israelite just for the sake of that i add that in there go All ahead right. I, go ahead that was, that was good detail was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. <clears throat> then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> again, then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. Mm -hmm. Just put a highlight right there. I, I, I don't think the spirit... This is the right spirit. So I don't think this spirit is going to tell Philip to do something that doesn't need to be done. Come on. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I? Except some man should guide me. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Mm. That, that's, that joint is heavy, man. It's very heavy, especially for those that are no, um, that are on, Old Testament only, they'd have to tell us who that man is because he was reading about this in Isaiah. And if that's heavy that he read that, you know, coming to Jerusalem to worship. And let's see what happens as we read on. And a eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speak of the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Way, Ak. Uh, so he asks, reading the scriptures, uh, many things that a lot of Old Testament only brothers, because, hey, the Old Testament only brothers, this, is, this lesson is also for you as well. So you have to ask yourself, who is this man just like this brother asked Philip? And in addition to that, not only do you know who this man is, okay, you have to believe on him that he, he died for you, according to this prophecy, and you'd have to also get baptized. In his name for their mission of sins. Mm. Got to be able to take that humiliation. Like, hey, man, Philip, <laughs> Philip humbled himself as we're about to continue reading. Mm -hmm. Got to be willing to do that. Come on. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached on to him Yahweh. And as they went on their way, they came onto a certain water h2o yeah because remember they went down to gaza it was a desert okay Come on. It, it signified that because it let you know there was not a lot of water there 
So they had to go along a certain way in order to they were able to reach an area where there was water. Come on, man. So he couldn't just stop where the desert in Gaza, where the desert was, and be like, "Hey, listen, I preach the word to you. You don't really need to be baptized. It's optional, and you don't need it. You're good. Just go back to just go back to Candace, and you know, handle your business that you need to handle. And uh, you know, maybe we'll see you next High Holy Day." <laughs> It wouldn't have been necessary. <clears throat> and, you, and look, come on, man. And, and and that's the thing. Another thing, another another um a thing to tackle is uh, uh the spirit, the angel, and the spirit is not going to lead the Philip and the eunuch to get together to do a transitional period. Because mm. what you're saying, anyone who's 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 rocking with that, I'm just this this is out of love, just to let y'all know, like. Anyone who's rocking with the, the the fact that this is a transitional period for them, they were learning and still getting together under their feet. There's so many problems with that. But you're saying if you're doing that, you're saying that the angel and the spirit needed to get it together as well. Ah. You're saying they didn't remember that baptism, <laughs> the water baptism is no longer necessary. That's <laughs> man, uh, it's dangerous. I don't even know what to even say. <laughs> I don't even I don't know what to even say, man. <laughs> I don't even know what to even say, man. I don't know how. I don't know how dudes is, is not scared of of what they're saying. For real. For, yo, I'm thankful that we, like, there's, 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 there are, don't get it twisted, there's things to learn in this walk and to, and to improve upon. There's mistakes that brothers have made. I'm not going to front, like, we're perfect. We have made mistakes. We're trying to be perfect as our Father in heaven, right? But at the same token, we have made mistakes. But to, to go that far, and, and I'm glad this is not something, this is not something that the Most High has allowed us to make a mistake on, and I'm thankful. That, mm -hmm. on that because that is heavy yeah that that that's heavy it is when you when you in it unintentionally could say something wrong and it could it could lead to something being so dangerous like that you're you're actually <laughs> you're not just talking about the the prophets you're not talking about the apostles here now you're also talking about the spirit that guided them the angel as well the angel and the angel con mm-hmm Mm -mm -mm. Man. <laughs> and they hey they listen, listen that's the reason why we take our time with what we bring out as far as teaching you know like you know that's why you gotta you gotta weigh everything in a balance you gotta talk to other brothers we sit on doctrine for a reason before we bring it out we discuss it we make sure all the kinks is worked out make sure that you're, that you're not leaning upon your own understanding and that you're leaning upon, you know, the understanding that's in the scriptures and you make sure that it's tried and proven that that's the correct doctrine. See, we're, we're you know, and, and that's just how it should be. You know, we should be like the, like the men that, you know, were counted worthy to preach this gospel, that were ambassadors of Yahweh Shai. Okay. They wrote letters and they did not have issues where they need to go and correct the, uh, a certain letter that they wrote. We want to be like that. Like Yahweh Shai said, be ye perfect for your heavenly father is perfect. You should be striving for perfection. You should be saying, when I bring this doctrine out, it's solid. You want to make sure that what you're saying is on point, man, because you are, you know, you're going to be judged for those things, man. And a lot of you, people are parakeeting what their elders are saying. And they don't, and they don't understand that you repeating your el what your elder you're saying, just for the sake of being down with your elder or being down with your camp or group, you're still going to receive the same judgment if that particular doctrine was false. That's why you want to make sure that if you're preaching something, have understanding of why you're saying that. Just don't say it. Have understanding of why you're saying it, and make sure that it's on point and that it's correct. Go ahead, Ock. Con. Verse 36. Con, couldn't say any better, man. 
or start with go re thirty five against lock in just yeah. All right. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same began at the same scripture and preached unto him Yahweh shot. And as they went on their way, they came onto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What do have hinder me to be baptized? Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. He answered and said, I believe that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is the son of Yahweh. And and that's um mm -hmm. and that's a key element too for brothers and sisters looking on when they're and part in baptism, anyone who has questions or two about, you know, let's say for y'all brothers and sisters that, that can't that have seen this, that, that pathway and, and know that it's necessary, all praises. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah that you were able to see it and uh, looking to baptize somebody. That's, that's, that's getting that confession. Mm -hmm. You know, that's and that's really what you want to confess Yahweh Shah, believing on him, that he is the son of Yahweh. He will lead us uh, to the heavenly father yep yeah exactly that confession is important because we know that and uh that some brothers and sisters may believe they need to be baptized but they believe in another name unfortunately um if you believe in another name other than yahweh shai we can't baptize you. we have to also oh. reiterate that because some people they jump up and they want to get baptized and then they believe in another name and we try and coach them into the fact that you have to believe in one particular name now, if you believe in another name, okay, then go and find somebody that's going to baptize you in that name and have faith that that's the name, if that's what you believe. You know what I'm saying? We can't tell you what to believe, but we have faith in the name Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. We believe that that is the name that was given, and we believe based off of just what we've been given in terms of uh, doctrine-wise, we've prayed and fasted in that name, and the Most High gave us, you know, understanding even more and more. So we, we have faith that that name has given us wisdom, knowledge of understanding that we have asked for and that we've received it in that name. Okay. Oh. That's why we glorify that name. Okay. Because of the fact that we know the power in it. Okay. The most high set up that name to be called upon. All right. And so for us, we have confidence that that is the name um, of the Lord. So we just have to say that point, like you were saying about the confession. You know, we need to, a brother needs to at least have heard you confess that this is the one that you believe on uh, before you get baptized. Oh. No, no infant baptisms here. Okay. Yeah. Infant can't speak and confess. <laughs> oh. Right. Oh. So you go ahead, 38. No doubt. Uh, so yeah, yeah, 30, uh, Slaki. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water. Both Philip and the unit, and he baptized them. Mm. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord called away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Mm. So we see it clear it clearly, you know, this is an example of of water baptism, same way, just like how Yahweh Shai did an example. There's no, was anyone saying that the ones just because, and this one is highlight, I don't think anyone clearly, I've talked to people and I haven't heard anyone clearly, you know, this, that'd be totally, they'd be totally insincere to refute and say this is not water when it's saying water. Okay, so cool. But now if you can admit that this is being, water being done here, then just because you may not see that every, like the acts that we just read in 2 and 38, just because you don't see the word water there. You can't assume that it's talking about the word. I mean, that's that's confusion. Why would somebody need to be baptized of water? Yahweh Shai being baptized of water. All these other Jews being baptized of water. The eunuch being baptized of water. But then it's okay for these other people to get baptized with the word. That's confusion, man. Mm. that was the case, they would all do the same thing. It would be all in the same doctrine. It'd be no more, there would literally be no more water baptism if that was the doctrine. Why is it continuing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember the, the examples we're giving, we're showing apostles doing this. Mm -hmm. okay, so apostles are, apostles are basically pillars. You know, they're, 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 you know, part of the foundation. It tells you that you know, the foundation is built on the apostles and the prophets of Yahweh Shah being the chief cornerstone. 
So how are you going to say that a, a, a foundation has is something that is sure? Okay. Mm -hmm. It has to be the most sure tr and tried part of a building because the foundation is what everything else stands upon. So if you're sitting here, if we're sitting here watching, you know, mainly apostles doing baptisms, we do have disciples that do them, you know, as well in other examples. But when you're seeing these type of things happening with apostles, men that were with Yahweh Shai, continuing this, we read it in John 3 and 22. We read it in John chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. And then we're going to the book of Acts and we're seeing them continue with this particular, you know, ministry aspect of the ministry and now we got guys 2000 years later questioning it it makes you wonder like you got to remember if you're teaching against this you are making yourself in opposition to the men that were doing these things mm -hmm. and if you're in opposition who you know guys talk about reincarnation all the time there were men that were against these men these men that we're reading about, many of them were murdered by Israel by other Israelites who believed that they had the truth. That's just food for thought for some for some of y'all that are against this. And and yes, just to make it clear out for people too that, that if you're you are against this, if you say this is optional, you, mm -hmm. you're not playing a great. You're not. There's no gray area with it. You know what I'm saying? We we know that right. It, it most high. <laughs> Yeah, I was shot. Say he's gonna spit those people out of his mouth, man. It's lukewarm, so we. I mean, that's why we want to be on fire with this word, man. So, with mm -hmm. this gospel, period. So there is no. It's optional and it's cool. You can play both sides of the fence with it. No, it's it's not. You're either gonna believe it or you just. It's better off that you just don't believe at it at all and you just teach against it. It's really better off that way. Mm. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, that's why. And what we're hoping, man, is with this type of series that we're doing is uh we're hoping just to start up the minds of brothers and sisters to just basically really examine like what you really believe in you know what i'm saying and um to open up your eyes you know we're hoping that brothers from whole camps and groups and you know guys in position of leadership that will believe or influential brothers or just really any brother even a brother at the bottom a brother that's by himself we just want israel to be saved to be delivered and you know some of y'all are part of the people that the most high is waiting to to wake up you know what i'm saying and we're hoping that by doing this uh you know that this will help stir up the minds of some of y'all to say you know what i'm going to stand upon what has been said we're not what we're saying is not a new doctrine so we're not boasting that oh we know this no we're telling you what was already written and what was already done huh. it's up to, now from there from us saying that we're just vessels. You know, faith has to come into play. That's between you and the Most High, whether or not he's going to give you that faith to believe upon the things that we're saying as vessels and ambassadors of the gospel. Yeah, Khan, Khan. Yeah, and, and all all praise to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, for all the brothers and sisters that have come in that believe, because I know um, when y'all brothers, you and the other brothers in uh, Ahran, y'all sob, y'all was most I had y'all coming to that realization that this was a needed thing. Um, and amongst other brothers, uh, brothers that we don't know, right? You know, because across the four corners of the earth. But uh, y'all came into it once the most I had y'all come in to understand this, you know what I'm saying, and bring this down. It's, it's changed. A lot has grown into it. We've seen a, we've seen a, a tremendous growth um, <laughs> from from even one year, you know what I'm saying? The most high is waking those, those up that he wants to participate in this act. And it's truly a blessing, man. It's truly, it's truly a, a beautiful thing. Mm hmm Yeah, no doubt. Like, you know, we're just, I mean, very thankful that the Most High just, um, man, I mean, he's been with us with this, you know, from the where it started before. I mean, the brother, you know, Azariah has seen it because he was one of the first few brothers that we had been able to baptize and, you know, shoot. Uh, to be honest, man, you know, the Most High has been using him heavily. You know what I'm saying? You know, call, I call him the, uh, the golden boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, but it's the Most High, you know. Almost. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of grace, a lot of favor to get a lot of uh, brothers connected and sisters 
connected in this and now it's kind of more exponential growth at this point you know which we talked about you know early on in the ministry when it was low when it was not that many brothers we talked about all the time you know it's going to be exponential growth one brother here one brother here one sister there and it's just going to keep on expanding and growing and now you know we're you know in different parts of the country where brothers and sisters believe and we also have found you know other people uh that were doing this ministry you know through the spirit you know um in other countries such as the philippines Come and then there's other countries we don't even know about like i said the elect is throughout the four corners of the earth and the word of the lord is um you know was out there and that's the beautiful thing about it is that when seeing what's going on here just within what we can see you know with our own eyes and what we're involved in you know and then seeing what people are doing in, the, in another country all the way across you know the the pacific you know come on uh, you're just like okay if we if this is what we're seeing and what we know about what else we don't know about like what do we we don't know what's going on in other places so many places we're not going to be able to reach but the most high has certain you know men that have received the revelation of the gospel and how to do it and the most high is going to use those people to continue on the same things that are written in in the book of acts that we're reading about so we just know that we have to individually do our part those of y'all that are listening that hear what we're saying and that believe now it's up to you that if you really believe in the things that we're talking about that we're reading about and that you feel it needs to be done now it's up to you to then do that next step you know what i'm saying because the, the door is closing you know they can start doing you know martial law we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow they can start doing travel restrictions and hopefully if it and if that happens hopefully you're near a brother that can you know reach you uh, amid those potential things that could happen you know now we know that if it's most high will he's going to hold back the some of the the, the things uh to come until of course his elect is sealed and that's going to happen on a global level but once it's over it's over yeah you you need to act like brothers and sisters need to, that what the brother said brothers and sisters need to act like if you haven't done the participate in the baptism in the name of yahweh shah for the mission of your sins you need to act like you have like little to no time like because you you do like to be honest like you need to act like it's it could be over tomorrow you need to operate as if you like when you had that paper you cared about the class and you needed to turn that thing in you need to type it you stayed up all night doing a college paper because you know the next day you got to turn it in or you're going to get a zero because the professor wasn't playing that you need to go ahead and turn that paper in you need to go ahead and and hit brothers up and and make it happen seriously though like um there's, there's no time to i was talking to a brother he said we can we can get done in a month or so I'm like yo i'm telling you we don't know if we got a month man like it, it, i seriously we seriously doubt that we have a month we're not calling the time and the hour but it's not looking good for someone waiting for a month or two months it's not looking good like that <laughs> yeah especially if you were him you wouldn't chance it <laughs> right on, you wouldn't chance even a month no man no no, we're concerned about weeks. We're concerned about we're concerned about a week. This week, we're gonna be on it. We're gonna be on the live tomorrow. We we don't even, we don't know what's gonna look like. It could get too bad out here. It could get crazy. Yeah, no doubt. We're gonna be on that live, man. That's gonna be. You know, we'll have people. You know, might be people come calling in. You know, might be people that uh from other groups. You know, it don't matter if y'all want to call in. And be like, man, you know, talk about what's going on with that cool you know because we we trying to reach our people regardless and we we love our people and that's why we're we're doing this you know we're taking the brunt of criticism but it's it's really a light thing for us to be criticized and be made fun of for believing in baptism you know oh, man. And I, I take that gladly that's that's small that's nothing all day. all day yeah it's nothing compared to like what you know men had to go through before while preaching this thing you know um you know so now we're going to go into We'll probably do part two parts. We're, we're gonna have to go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and go to the next example. And uh I guess we can stop at this last one right here. And then we can do a part two. Um and we can do a part two of this and question and answer. That's a good idea. Huh. What we'll do we'll merge the last part of the other examples, and then we'll have at the last half of it, we'll have a question and answer session concerning this topic. So what we're gonna so we're gonna now go into uh Saul, who later became Paul in his conversion, which I think is a good way to wrap up this part one of this uh, as well. So let's go down into 
Yeah, yeah I want to go to now. Ananias is a disciple. He was not. Uh, he was not uh, an apostle. Okay, so the Lord came. Now let's the brother went into the angel thing, right, and the spirit thing. So we're going to do with what the Lord is going to be doing with Ananias, right? So uh-huh. let's go. It's going to go down to Acts chapter 9 and verse 10. Okay. So, <laughs> hey, this is heavy. Okay. With the angel and the spirit. Now we're dealing with the Lord, Yahweh Shahamashiach. Go ahead, Ak. Let's see. Let me start off. Start off at which one? Yeah. Acts chapter 9 and 10. Okay. Huh. And there was a certain disciple <coughs> at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Taurus. For behold, he prayed. And have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. And Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he have authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. <coughs> and Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Yahweh that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Come on, man. This is the conversion of Paul the Apostle. Led by Yahweh Shai himself. Come on. Got to the brother Ananias who was living in Damascus to go. He commanded him to go to a house of Judas and ask for Saul who is of Tarshish to lay hands on him that he may receive sight that he may be baptized for the remission of sins. Come on, man. And yeah. you be filled with the Holy Ghost. That water and that yep. Holy Ghost. It's two mm-hmm. parts. We talked about that equation. It's just, it's a it's a mm-hmm. double line. You're gonna yep. get all of them baptism. You're gonna get all of them. <laughs> yep. And 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 just to try, and even yo, were you gonna say something? Oh no, you got it. yeah, and we're seeing an example with Paul's conversion, right? Or Saul, formerly, you know, Paul, formerly known as Saul. We're seeing this particular conversion now. People always ask, but what about the other apostles? You better believe that the other apostles did this because the Most High is not the author of confusion. Mm-hmm. But the Most High is not going to show every single work. Okay. If the Most High showed every single last person that was a believer in this baptized, it would get redundant. Okay it would not make any sense for the most high to do that. You would have to already know what the order is. If you're a believer, okay, and you understand the order in which one would believe, you would understand the consistency that would have to occur with those believers. Just basically make it in your own imagination and know that that would happen with them as well. There's a, why would Ananias do something that he hadn't had done to himself? <laughs> Does that make any sense? And Ananias just heard the word and wouldn't get baptized, but then he has to go baptize Paul. That makes no sense. That makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. So don't try. So the Most High is not going to pl- allow you to play with your own ignorance if you are one who is a scoffer or one that basically is vehemently against baptism. What we're doing is showing you the example of somebody who is highly 
you know, I, there's probably a reason why the Most High showed Paul's, okay, because he's a living example and a testament to the Most High's mercy upon those of our people that have done wrong, as he called himself the chief sinner in Israel for him because he persecuted the church. So we're showing you what he had to do. And then as you've seen, the Most High used him as a chosen vessel to basically bear his name in front of the Gentiles. That was actually a, a ministry that he was going to basically be spearheading, which was those that were lost um, among our people that were scattered in the diaspora who had taken on the Greek you know, customs and religion and had fallen away from the Commonwealth of Israel and needed to be reconciled back with them. Okay, so that's part of the reason why you're seeing that example. And that's a beautiful way to cap it off. So um, the next one, we'll go, go through the last uh, bit of examples and we'll have a question and answer session from there. So if you're looking forward to calling and wanting to defend um, either for or against, you know, we'll welcome that at uh, that time. Hopefully sometime next week, most likely we'll have it Monday as well. Um, and then, you know, we'll see what happens coming tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to, like we said, we will be doing some kind of a live stream. I will do plan on being up uh, throughout the night during the election. And we'll probably have various brothers on and off of the live stream and, um, you know, see what happens with this election, see what kind of madness ensues. Um, and if it's the, the Lord's will that there still be peace here in Babylon for the sake of, you know, continuing the ministry and continue what we have to do. We'll continue doing the work as uh, until, you know, the time comes. So you have anything else to say, Ak? Nah, man. Um, that's that's pretty much the gist of it. And um, I, I will, I'll bring it back. I know we close, we close it out. Uh, well, it was a beautiful precept to close it out. But just just to reify, I think this is another one just to, to reify what you just said about not everyone's example, not everything, not even just about baptism, right? But in general, not everything being put into the Bible, right? We know in part, we prophesy in part. Mm -hmm. um, it's the book of John, um, chapter 21, verse 25. And there are also many other things which Yahawashai did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Come on. Yep. That's just plain. All right. So, shoot, with that, we give all praise and glory to Yahweh Bashem. Peace, mercy, and blessings be abound to the hopeful elect. May the grace of Yahweh, our, our God, and our power be with you, and the mercies and the love that is found in Yahweh Hamashiach as well. Shalom. Shalom.